Perfect. Um, yes, well, thanks everyone over at MTI for having me on again. It's a, a pleasure to be here with you, wherever in the world you are. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, today uh, one of the topics that's near and dear to my heart, which is uh, powerful patterns and, uh, and probabilities, which uh, to me is uh, pretty much the, uh, the road map to uh, how the entire market works. So I said to someone a couple of weeks ago, I said, trading the market without understanding patterns is like driving drunk, you know, it's, it's directionless uh, and dangerous. And um, uh, uh, so we're going to get right into things. Uh, of course, uh, standard spam on the screen. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about us. Uh, we've uh, actually been now around nine years, going on our tenth year. Uh, I've been in the market myself for 16 years. And um, my big belief um, about the market or trading is, um, is, is, is the KISS principle. Keep it simple. And uh, when I first started trading in probably my fourth year was one of my most successful years. And it was also when I uh, probably knew a tenth of what I now know about the market. So knowing more doesn't always mean making more. Uh, and in fact, sometimes it's actually the opposite effect, as maybe many of you have found. So uh, I always believe in bringing it back to the simple things that work. And uh, the first belief we really have about the market is um, is that you know most people struggle with overcomplicating things. Keeping it simple is about you know having systems in place that allow you to know uh, you know when to when, how to systematically get in or out. Um, a lot of the time, people do they chase their tail because they'll look at a trade, uh, it, it goes up 15%, and they think, oh gosh, well I've had a bunch of losses, so uh, I'm going to get out and clinch my profits here. And uh, then they sell, and then they see it go up another 20%. And they think, and then they think, oh well, next time I'm not going to do that. Next time I'll stay in longer. Then the next time I stay in longer, they lose all their profit plus another 20 percent. And then they change their strategy again and again and again. And they're constantly changing how they make decisions based on trying to analyze every single trade setup um, as an as an individual situation. Whereas, whereas I'm a big believer in rather tr rather than over analyzing and. Uh, and, and trying to second or triple or quadruple guess yourself and looking at every source of information out there, it's more important to say, well, what? even though this might not be the perfect way to trade this, what, what do the rules tell me is the best way to trade this in over thousands and thousands of examples? Um, what, what's the systematic way to do this right? And that's really what we, uh, um, what we try to enforce is that uh, the reason why most people fail isn't because they're, they're not well informed or don't have good systems of uh, software systems or indicators. It's just they don't have a set of rules that they're really confident in, uh, or maybe they don't. They do, but they have so many that they don't know which ones to follow. Um, and that's why, uh, again, we're, we're really about systems. So the systems that uh, that I believe in uh, is firstly that uh, obviously smart money is a huge part of the market. Um, they, rec they estimate anywhere between 80 on the low end to as much as 95% of volume on a given day comes from algorithms or computers making decisions on, on billions and billions of dollars. And uh, the only way that these systems can, can, uh, can make decisions is through rules. So firstly, understanding what rules these the smart money r uh, plays by is critical. Understanding whether the smart money is buying or selling is obviously very important, and then understanding the patterns that they they use to uh, to navigate these decisions is extremely valuable. Um, so that's what we'll be talking about tonight. So it, take calculated risks is obviously very different from being rash, and when you start dealing with patterns and understanding what they what they're telling you, the goal. When I take on a student and we're teaching somebody, um, what we'll say early, early on in their education is the goal of these courses of what we do is to allow you to get to a point where when you look at a trade idea, no matter how it comes to you, that you're able to look at it and say, right, what do the rules tell me? Where is support? Where is resistance? Are we approaching that resistance with smart money loading up? Or are we approaching resistance with smart money selling to everybody else? Um, and that tells us whether we're looking to short or go long at that, support, at that point. Um, what does the pattern tell us to do? Where should we get in? And where does the pattern tell us we're highly probable where we should get out? Um, rules. So that at the end of the day, if we've, um, if we've gone through that checklist of saying, yep, this says yes, this says yes, this says yes, um, we just do it. 
we don't care whether the mark what Trump's saying or what Jeanette Yellen's saying or, or in the fear mongering we heard in the news. None of that matters. None of it. Because ultimately, we have a checklist that says make the decision. It's by the rules, by the book, a good trade. Um, and uh, a good trade isn't necessarily a winning trade. A good trade is one that's by the rules. A bad trade isn't a losing trade. It's one that is not by the rules. So, so we start to replace that rationale and we start to refine how we make our decision process of going through those rules because they've proven over thousands and thousands of examples to make us money. So um, as we start to kind of push through and push past these emotional um, mistakes, we get into the idea of, um, of, uh, of, of a profit center of, of, of um, of setting these successful things up. We get away from emotions, we get away from uh, changing our strategy every single time based on whether we make money or not. Terrible idea. Um, and, uh, and we get away from, uh, from not reading things that are, that are designed to lose us money. The news is there to, <laughs> to, to usually make you do the very worst thing at the worst time. So, if we start to look at the, if we strip all that garbage away, if we look at really the, what actually makes the market the market, um, uh, my other belief as it, is that it is, it is not a stock market. It is a market of individual companies. And so um, we start to talk about the ground up structure of how all this works. Um, the most simplest of which, of course, is that we have three directions up, down, and sideways markets. Uh, pretty simple, uptrending, higher highs and higher lows. Downtrending, lower highs, lower lows. And uh, sideways markets are, um, are a direction as well. It's not directionless, it's a sideways direction. So um, uh, these are three different markets or profit centers that we want to be able to, uh, to utilize to our benefit. And, uh, and make money from. So we've got to, we've got to be, in other words, be prepared for what tool are we going to use uh, to attack uh, an upward market, a downward market, or a sideways market? What is going to be the best pattern or strategy to use that we can whip out of our belt if um, those conditions are present? So that's immediately going to make you better returns by uh, trading the strategy that suits the market the best. Um, and you can profit from all three directions, obviously, no matter what your structure of your investment account is. The other um, less talked about, but perhaps um, even more important uh, definition about the market is that we also have three types of market cycles. Uh, oscillating markets, uh, excuse me, oscillating patterns, consolidation patterns, and momentum patterns. Now, these are, uh, if, any, if anyone's not familiar with the, the, the really important distinctions between these three, uh, just let me know in the chat box. Um, often people have heard about it, but, but understand it sometimes not as much. And it's important, it's absolutely vital, because the difference between an oscillating and momentum strategy is as different to how you trade it and identify it and what indicators you use uh, as a long is to a short. For example, uh, if you are dealing with an oscillating pattern, the most important support and resistance that governs why that stock goes up or down uh, is, is simply because of moving, uh, excuse me, of, um, of an oscillating level or a straight line. So in an oscillating pattern, when we look at the chart, the absolute most important thing to be aware of are the extremes, the, uh, the things that hold this stock in or the index in that makes it reverse at certain points. That's what makes this thing tick. So when we are trading an oscillating stock uh, or any stock, the, the, the idea is, what is it? Buy support, sell resistance. Simple stuff. So stock trading 101. But what does that mean if we're oscillating? Well, that means that, let's just use an example here. I'm just going to draw support and resistance. If we see a stock is shot down, hit support, rallies back up, and we're thinking, right, we know where support is now. Um, there's a trade potential here. 
with an oscillating stock, because we know that this, the key support are these horizontals, we want to then buy support, which means buying it as close to that line as possible, which means buying it when the stock is actually probably dropping still. So that is buying support in an oscillating trade. We buy a dropping stock, and because we know that the oscillating resistance is going to be the most powerful thing, we also sell it as it's rallying, because it's more likely to reject off of this line than it is to break through it if we're dealing with an oscillating trade. That difference alone uh, is a difference of maybe making 10% or having it or getting in once it's already bounced and getting in here and getting out when it's already pulled back and maybe making very little, if not nothing, or perhaps even a loss. So that difference alone is key. When we're dealing with a momentum strategy, the, the horizontals are not the core ca characteristics that govern the stock. In fact, it's the moving averages. That's what defines it as a momentum strategy or a momentum stock. So, um, so in that case, the moving average is the most important thing. So the stock will often bounce down, 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 constantly hitting it but never breaking through. And because we know this is the force that's making it a strong downtrend, the moment we get above that, that, that force is now going in its favor. So when people say, oh, well, I, I, I wait to buy confirmation, you're not buying confirmation. You're actually buying support. The stock isn't at support until it's crossed over that moving average. So that's not confirmation. That's just buying support the same way you would in an oscillating uh, method buying it as it drops. Both are the same. Now there's obviously more we can do to add to the uh, to add to the the power of this and make these more highly probable trades, and that's obviously what we're going to continue getting into here today. But that's a basic example. Is everyone cool with that? Any questions on that? Just if you're writing anything now, one other thing: indicators different. Yep, indicators are absolutely different between the strategies. You would not use moving averages at all, really, for a oscillating trade. Um, uh, down, I'm, I'm down in Costa Rica at the moment. I met a guy uh, the other night, and uh, he was telling me how he's a futures trader, has been trying it for three years, and, and only uses moving averages. And I said, "Well, you're missing 67% uh, of the market direction then, because two thirds of the time, moving averages will not be effective if it's oscillating or consolidating." So anyway, important to know that. Let's move on. So then we start to get into uh, into patterns, and this is where we start to look at. Okay, so um, we understand support and resistance. We can understand the importance of recognizing that. But um, how do we get into identifying uh, high probability trades? What exactly, when we sit down and say, well, um, okay, it's a it's a Friday afternoon. Let's go and look for the best trade to take Monday. What would you do? What, what, what would you start to, uh, to look for? Um, now, most people, uh, the, what they look for is they just look at what they're used to. They look at Netflix. They look at IBM. They look at Amazon. They look at um, you know, uh, Cisco, whatever the case might be. They, they're going to go to the same usual suspects and simply try and figure out what the best trade is on that group um, to make money on. Uh, other people, maybe um, more sophisticated technical analysts might then, or scanners might go and look for stocks that are breaking above a moving average or, or things like that, or look at a newsletter. There, there's lots of ways we can get these ideas. <clears throat> but we want to be a bit more specific than that. and. Um, Partly because if we're looking, if, if we're in the business of trading, then we want to find the highest probability route to success. And, and that means getting really specific about what we want, what, what defines a high probability setup. Uh, think about like a dating website. You go on match.com or something like that, you see advertised. Uh, and they say, you know, uh, describe your perfect partner. 
Um, the, uh, I think the question is, uh, are like what, 100 questions long or something like that, something crazy? Because if you're going to find the perfect person, you need to get specific. You can't just say, oh, I'm looking for a guy, I'm looking for a girl, that would be just fine with me. <laughs> so when, with a stock, we want to get specific as well. We're looking for that perfect partner in our portfolio. So we might say, all right, what do we want in, a, in the perfect, let's say the perfect short? We want to find the perfect short. All right, well, let's, let's go, um, let's think about the pattern first. So um, there are a hundred patterns it, plus in the market. These patterns are broken down into oscillating patterns, consolidation or breakout patterns, and momentum patterns. So you've got three groups within that, that big tank. And, uh, and each of them has a different probability. Now, we're, uh, well, we're two days away from Super Bowl. So if you want to think of it like this, a pattern, these patterns are how the market makers um, play the market. In, in a Super Bowl on Sunday, we're going to be watching two coaches on either side uh, decide which play that they're going to pull from the playbook. And then we're going to watch these big bulky blokes run across the field and to me that looks like chaos as an Australian who's still learning the game. I'm like, this is nuts. How do they even know where the ball's going? This is crazy. Uh, and to the, to, the, to the average investor, they look at the market and they go, chaos. This is, this is just nuts. The, you know, how could anyone make money in this market? But that's, it's not chaos at all. It's very well organized and it's all done through uh, orchestrated, almost algorithmic plays. And um, so the, we want to figure out what the best play is to look for. If we are in a bull market, um, uh, as we are at the moment, or at least an upward market anyway, uh, the, the most highly effective shorting pattern in an up market is a head and shoulders pattern. So um, the first thing that we can look for is we can look for a head and shoulders. Now, within a head and shoulders pattern, we have three types. We are, well, actually, we have six, but um, you have upward, upward head and shoulders, you have sideways, like I've drawn up top, and you have downward neckline, head and shoulders. So the most high probability pattern of these is the downward neckline. So now we've, now we've gone to the highest probability pattern, and now we've refined it down to the highest version highest probability version of that. Okay, so what else can we add to the equation? Well, we could then say, okay, well, um, we want this stock to not only be high probability that it's going to plummet down to here as a head and shoulders should, but let's make that higher probability. Let's, let's look to see that the CEO and the, uh, the chairman of the board and, uh, and the vice president, all of those guys, they're all selling the hell out of it. They're selling, all, they're selling tons and tons, millions and millions of dollars worth of the stock all at the same time. And, uh, and oh, and let's go in and look at uh, when they've sold uh, that amount of stock before. And let's, let's go and find, make sure that every time they've sold before, the stock's plummeted 30, 40, 50 percent. That'd be a pretty good track record of uh, knowing who to, who to watch, right? Let's, so let's add that. Let's add the insider track record as well as selling. Let's go in and also make, look for, uh, for this to be happening in a stock that's in the weakest sector of the market. With the, with the most amount of selling in general, which for example would be things like application software, lodging, um, things like that at the moment. Um, let's go in and let's look for a price to earnings ratio of uh, 100 plus, some astronomical HEP P to E ratio. Um, as well, let's, let's add in debt. Let's make sure they're heavily in debt. Now let's combine all of those things and, and wouldn't you say that, is a, that would be a better candidate for a trade than simply something that's in a downtrend or an uptrend or whatever the case might be? Why not get specific? Because the more we add to that equation, that boiling pot of, of fantastically weak criteria, 
um, the more probability we add of it going where we want. It's not guaranteed, but more probability. Take, for example, a stock like Monster Energy Drink. Now, Monster Energy Drink is uh, one of the weakest industries in the market over the last few months uh, has been beverages um, and soft drinks. Uh, Monster Energy Drink was, um, if you look back in uh, May through September, let me just take all these moving averages and stuff off so we don't need them. Now, why don't we need them? Because it is an oscillating pattern. What governs this stock back here? was the uh, uptrend and uh, uptrend channel. That's all that matters, therefore. Uh, where is the stock going? What pattern is it? So we define support and resistance. We get the pattern. Now we know the probability of where it will go. We see that it is an uptrend channel. Therefore, we, uh, the way we trade that is we measure the distance between the top of the channel to the bottom of the channel, and then we move that to wherever it breaks out from which was there. That therefore told us that there was a high probability of this going to at least $49. Simple as that. Now, we can add probability to this to make that pattern even more powerful by then looking for where the smart money is going. So one of the indicators I've got down the bottom is a smart money indicator, uh, Twig's money flow. And this looks at, the, it analyzes where the stock's going, how much volume is going with it, and if the stock's closing in the top half or the bottom half of the range, and a bunch of other things. It, it combines all of that into one indicator to say, is smart money or high frequency buying or selling to you? And as you can see, as Monster Energy Drink went up, the smart money was going out. So now we have a high probability pattern with even more probability because the smart money is loading out as, this, as that pattern came to an end and in fact breaking down negatively. So you can see that going in the opposite direction. So high probability pattern, powerful probability. Um, and that was an excellent shorting opportunity um, and one that we'd actually alerted to our students back last year. Now, what we can do is, if we're curious to, uh, to get a further look at, uh, at, at, at what that smart money is, in fact, doing, is we can then go in and actually look at that, uh, that type of criteria I mentioned before. We can go in and look at the insiders themselves and see, are they selling? Is it just the high frequency that's selling off, or are the insiders themselves selling off? And there you go, millions of shares from the chairman and CEO, vice chairman and president, director, VP of Monster Energy, um, all of the people that count, all selling at the same time in the order of millions and millions of dollars. Hundred, over $156 million of selling in that transaction alone. Obviously, it doesn't exude confidence, does it? And with a P to E ratio, which was at that time was up around 60, certainly makes for a, a, a good perfect storm. Still a good short recently, when it, uh, after it dropped all the way down here to our long-term target at 40 bucks, it rallied sharply, as you'd expect it to. This is a uh, high frequency uh, buy zone, an algorithmic buy zone, where they kick in and just buy. Um, and then, uh, so that's a great long there, and then we went back and forth and formed a new pattern. So once again, we ask ourselves the question, what makes the stock go up? What makes it go down? We draw those lines on, and aha, we're left with a shape. Okay, what shape is that? Well, it's a shape that has a, a tops that go higher and bottoms that go higher. Aha, I know what that is. That's a rising wedge. What does that mean? Well, the means one break, break down beneath it, kind of like a channel. We measure the, the widest part. There we go. And that is therefore, we look for the breakdown point. 
and then we get our uh, our entry criteria right there as we break through that line immediately you're getting in at 44 50 or so uh, and you've got a target down a uh, down a 41 and change and again uh, this is in a bull market. Do we worry about that? No. It's a, it's a fantastic pattern. The, the smart money is doing what we want it to. It's in a weak industry. The insiders are selling. Everything, every box that we have to check says yes. So do we start, do we overcomplicate that? Do we read what Jim Crane is saying? Do we read what any other stock analyst is saying? No, we just simply follow the rules uh, and, and there's a trade. Um, so that's a rising, there you can see a channel and a rising wedge. Okay, let's pull up. Let's do it, let's do um, a bullish example. Okay, so let's have a look at, let's look at CALA. C-A-L-A. -A. Um, this is a really cool example because you've got a few different patterns all in one. Okay, so firstly focus your attention on the left hand side. So once again we look at the macro pattern, the longer time frame here. In the long term, CALA was in a downward channel. Okay, and uh, you can see this this uh, this very parallel structure. What that means is, once again, we we measure the distance between the top and bottom of the channel, and then what we do is we duplicate that above the breakout point, and that told us that this stock had a target of 683, and that and that was our target was 683, and um, just shy of eight dollars no, and 853. Sorry. Um, 683 and 853 were the two targets we had. The first target, though, most importantly, was based purely off of this pattern. Downward channel, um, it then broke out, and you had that beautiful runway all the way up to those, uh, those levels, which for a $4 stock uh, gives it a 50% plus upside. Uh, I didn't, we didn't know, couldn't have foreseen that that was going to happen overnight. It ended up doing that. Um, that was just luck. But, uh, but that's, what, that's where the pattern said it should go. So a, a fundamental based catalyst still took it to exactly where the technicals told it to. And, uh, and we can zoom in a little bit and I'll show you the other pattern. So the other pattern that occurred, I'm just going to take this away for a little second. Can everyone, can everyone see this pattern right here. What we've got in the short term was a flag formation. Now a flag formation is the most powerful breakout strategy that exists in the market. On a, we use a ranking from 1 to 100, um, uh, which is a combination of things based on profitability, probability and predictability, the three P's we call it. Uh, this ranks number one. Uh, highly probable, highly profitable, highly predictable. And um, uh, this, this, this is a fantastic breakout scan. So when, when you've got this A on the macro breaking out of a downward channel and B, you have the highest probability breakouts um, pattern happening as it breaks out of its channel, you've got a, you've got a double whammy. So that's, and, and right now, as you can see, it's, uh, it's flagging again. So again, none of this is looking at uh, what the company does. We don't even often even look at what the company does, uh, other than just the industry that they're in. So that's it. We don't want to form an opinion. The, the more opinionated we get, the worse we become as a trader, because we're now no longer responding to rules. We're responding to subjective things, our own thoughts and feelings, which really shouldn't have a place in trading, uh, not if we're doing it as a technical trader. Uh, and it also removes the, uh, 
the stress of trading because you're no longer worrying whether you're right or wrong. You're simply saying, is the, do the, what do the rules tell me to do? That's the easiest way not to lose any sleep because you're just following the same structure again and again, keeping it simple. Um, so hopefully you can, you can you, this is starting to kind of click in. Um, and once more, for example, say, let's go in and say, okay, well, what were the insiders doing? And there you go, there's C-A-L-A. -A. Look at them load up. One, one big half a million shares right there at three bucks, right before it skyrockets. <laughs> Don't know, uh, do you think that he might have known something? Mr. Philip Gross, the 10% owner or more, buys 1.5 million shares uh, right before it goes to nine bucks. Who knows? But it's certainly worth, uh, certainly adds probability to your trade, doesn't it? So those are the, these are the kinds of things that we're looking for. And, and again, and keeping it simple. Uh, what I've just shown you, I mean, is about as sophisticated as I want to get in charting. I want to know, is it a high probability pattern? Does the smart money agree with me? And do I have excellent risk reward ratio? Uh, and, and, and with those three things, it's unbelievably powerful. And then where you can put your sophistication into is, is the scanning, how, how you find these ideas so that you can um, spend your time looking at pre-qualified um, high probability things. And our scans have um, tons of, 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 of criteria and factors that will look at lots and lots and lots of criteria to make sure that it's a high quality stock. Let, let, the, let the computers do that work for you. Your work should be as simple as it, as, it, as it needs to be. Focusing on the pattern, support resistance, where's the smart money going, and, uh, and, and the risk reward. Simple as that. Uh, so we talked about the oscillation. And um, one comment I'll have on this before we kind of move on. When we're dealing with oscillation, the um, one important factor to know is, uh, uh, or, or with any, again, with any pattern, it's making sure that you're finding a, a strong, a strong pattern, a strong level. Um, we talked about this uh, previous stock, uh, MNST. I mentioned that there was a, a buy opportunity. This is a good example of where how you identify good longs in an oscillating fashion. So when this when Monster Energy Drink had plummeted from fifty seven dollars to forty one, I mean, how many people would have thought looking at that chart on that specific day, wow, what a great buying opportunity? Probably very few people would would look at that and say, Oh yep, that looks like it's going straight up. But it did. And in fact that was a high probability buying opportunity. So um, when you're looking at oscillating levels, um, the key thing is to find a really strong support. This is where a stock had plummeted, hit support, and rallied straight up. And that makes it a high probability double bottom. We call this pattern an Adam and Adam. So lots of people know what a double bottom is, but there's lots of types of double bottoms. There's Eve and Eve, there's Eve and Adam, there's Adam and Adam, and there's Adam and Eve. Only one of these do we really want to trade, and that's these ones. If the, if the, if the support isn't sharp and strong, it's not, it doesn't represent a high frequency buy zone, and that's what we want. We want to look for patterns where we have, the, in, in an oscillating sense, where we have extremely high probability areas where a stock has gone straight down and then hit some magic level and just turned straight around and went straight back up. So again, patterns and probabilities. We look for these high probability, strong Adam and Adam double bottoms. Uh, and there you've got one right there. At that situation, you can get in at $41.00. Your risk is a buck ten, a dollar ten, and your reward is six dollars. You've got five to one risk reward ratio there. 
if you got one time out of five, you would still be breaking even. Two times out of five, now you're making money. Three times out of five, now you're doing really well, and so forth. Make sense for everyone so far? Any questions? All righty. Let's take my pen off. <laughs> okay. So as I said, so um, the idea of uh, once we now start to get this uh, an idea of what we're looking for and, and what these patterns are, we can start scanning for them and start developing a uh, a more a more thorough way of of, of um, making our time efficient. Uh, I believe in keeping it simple. I also don't like to waste time. So uh, why spend six hours um, watching the market when when, alg when algorithms can do it for us? Uh, I love the market, but it doesn't mean I want to do it all day long. Uh, I got into stock trading to uh, to free up time and to have money work for me. But I, f I think a lot of people get into trading and end up finding that they're working even harder for even less, <laughs> which is not the right way around. So um, obviously when we start to get into the idea of, of scanning, we can start scanning for these high probability patterns. For those people that go and trade only Netflix or only Apple or only IBM because those are the things you're familiar with, just keep in mind that at any given time, what do you think the chances are that, that Apple is in a high probability pattern and the insiders are going in your favor and the P2E ratio and the risk reward and the, I mean, what, what are the chances are that a stock that you follow is going to be in one of those highest probability potential trade zones? Very slim. Maybe once or twice a year will you get an opportunity on a stock like that. Maybe. Sometimes none. Um, okay, well let's and let's let's eliminate all that. Let's just think about the pattern itself. If there's a hundred patterns out there, keep in mind that if you only trade a certain amount of stocks, that at any given point that stock could be any in, at any point in any one of those hundred patterns. So unless you're an expert in all hundred, you're not going to be doing as well as if you focused on a few core patterns and only traded those instead of restricting yourself to the stock. Just an idea. Uh, so charts tell a story, and what we want to focus on are these high probability patterns. The high probability pa um, and understanding the differences. The highest probability patterns are head and shoulders and inverted head and shoulders, double tops and double bottoms, flag formations, very very powerful, ascending and descending triangles, uh, continuation momentums and fall, rising and falling wedges. These are the highest probability setups. So the, the core thing to, uh, to, to do is to start focusing on these. So uh, we put together a, um, uh, it's the first time we've done this live course uh, Around uh, around the idea of the pa of, of focusing in on patterns, and uh, so we've launched a um, a workshop that uh, is going to be coming up in is it uh, the February 9th, next week, where we're going to teach you to focus uh, how to scan for and trade these high probability patterns, um, and 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 eliminate all the extra noise. It's going to be something that's structured so that it's therefore something you can come in and do every day and do within a 10, 15 minute process of finding, uh, by the end of that 15, 20 minutes, let's say, you, you should have narrowed it down to maybe two, three stocks that really jump out from that scan. And then you can decide which of those three you like the best, or maybe you trade all three, uh, however you, depending on your, your personal preferences. But it's very efficient and uh, focused on not trying to find every possible way to make money every day. Um, there's, gonna, there's thousands of ways to make money, and obviously ours is not the only way. Um, but, but you don't want to be an expert in everything. You, wanna pro you probably want to just be efficient. I'd much prefer to make 100, uh, excuse me, 60 grand a year working 10 hours a week um, 
and making than working 60 hours a week for 100. I prefer to, to make a little less to work a lot less, wouldn't you? Uh, and that's the idea that I'm, I, this is my personal preference anyway with trading. Focus on efficiency. This is what this is all about. So uh, in the upcoming workshop, uh, what we're going to be doing is it's going to be a special live scanning workshop, um, the perfect storm, and it's, it's focused uh, on, the, on patterns. So it's called the, called the perfect storm pattern edition, which is where we're, we're looking for these ideal setups where we've got the highest, highest, <laughs> highest probability setups and, uh, and combining these factors that we've just been going through. Yeah, I'm going to correct that. <laughs> okay, yeah, highest probability setups. So the key thing is we're going to be teaching you um, how to scan. Once we get the scan results, how do we look at those stocks and within, you know, within seconds identify, right, is this oscillating or is it momentum? Uh, there, and therefore knowing what support and resistance we're going to be paying attention to. By knowing that, then we know what pattern it is. And once we know what pattern it is, then we know whether it's one we want to trade or not. Now, the idea of scanning for these is that we should be getting the ones we want. But we want to be aware of the ones we don't as well, just so we can throw the bad fish back in, so to speak. Um, so that's where we identify true support and resistance. We're going to be going through a five-step approach to locate precise entry and exit targets. So you have a consistent trade plan. So you're not going, oh, well, now let me check this indicator. Well, that one says no, but this one says yes. Now what do I do? I mean, we want to be able to give you a yes, 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 no system uh, so you can go through trade by trade and do what we call the blink test. So be able to recognize instantly whether it's something you should spend any time on or not. Uh, and then with the uh, precise entry and exit targets plan we'll be teaching you, this will then allows you to do this type of work at night so that you can then pre-plan your trades the night before. All of the trade, well I shouldn't say all, 90% of the trades I do are usually at midnight. I program in, right, if this stock, you know, like, like this example we just talked about, if this stock goes down to $41, buy put the stop loss down at $39.93 and if it gets up to $45.53, sell it. All of that's pre-programmed, just like an algorithm. You therefore don't even need to watch it the next day. That trade might not even execute the next day. It might be a week later and all of a sudden you get a notification that the trade's been bought and then uh, a week later the trades uh, hit your exit signal and you've made money. That's the type of trading I like. Sometimes it's a two-hour trade where it'll hit the entry and exit within a very short time frame. That makes me a day trader, I guess, but I'm not a day trader. I'm a patterns trader, regardless of how much time it takes. Um, so acornwealthcorp.com forward slash power and the scans you're going to learn are awesome. That finding flags is the most powerful pattern that exists in the market. It is, uh, if you, I, I wanted to trade, I, I started learning to trade in 2001, I think, yeah, 2001. This uh, was always the pattern that people talked about when I started to learn. The problem was is I couldn't scan for it. And if I can't scan for something, it's too much work. I don't want to spend four hours going through every stock in the market looking for the pattern. So if the scan, if you can't scan, I won't trade it. Uh, about five years ago, we developed the scan and it worked extremely well. Uh, we actually came across it a little bit by accident. Um, that's one you're going to learn. Uh, finding flags, trading the extremes, which is what we touched on today. How to find these, uh, these beautiful stocks where they're, they're touching on support and inside the insiders. Um, very quickly, I don't, we don't have much time left here, but uh, flags really just are so powerful. And um, I, I showed you CALA. Um, you know, some of these ones, uh, I should, here's another one, uh, Intrepid Potash was another really good flag. And uh, that was back here. You can see this bang straight up from a buck forty to three dollars. That was a fantastic flag. That's exactly from the scan what you're going to be able to learn to find every single day. 
uh, very, very powerful movers. And then, of course, lastly, the last scan you'll learn is the inside the insiders, and that's how we find stocks like Monster that have extremely high probability of dropping because of the pattern, but the insiders or selling the hell out of it right when these patterns start to build or break down. Um, and we're out of time here, so one, one bonus that we'll uh, also include for you as we wrap up, you will include, we'll be including a one-on-one -on -one personal training session for you to practice the scans with us, make sure you're getting it right, uh, as well as a, uh, a special strategy that you'll be able to learn on demand called Open Range. Uh, we won't have a ton of, can't really talk about that now, but I'll leave my information up on the screen. Um, again, it's acornwealthcorp.com forward slash power. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, email us or give us a call, and uh, we'd love to talk to you. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll be seeing you on February 9th at uh, 8.15. I uh, hope everyone's enjoyed that. Uh, again, if I've missed any questions, just shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And yes, the scanner will work on, on all patterns. We give you a free, a free platform as well as the code to plug it into your own if you don't have it. We pre-programmed them in TOS, NinjaTrader, TC2000, Incredible Charts, and Metastock. And that's all we've got time for, folks. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday, and uh, thanks again to everyone at MTI for organizing another epic event. Have a great weekend.